Well, hello. We are now at day five. I'm excited that I'm getting closer to my new birth. Anyway, we're talking about tonight, we talked a little bit about government and talked about authority, and I talked to you about, uh, you know, how important it is to understand that, you know, people don't like authority, they don't like uh, submission, they don't like any of those things in regards to making sure that government is taking place in any ministry or business. we got to have it. Toward the end of this, uh, I'll give more information, but tonight I was led to talk to you about making sure you look at the times of your season growth of the ministry or business. And so we got to look at spirits that will come in and try to prevent you from having stability during these seasons of growth. You know, and even when you're in a transition of trying to get the ministry, you know, to come up higher from wherever it was during this challenge. So during these seasons, I want you to know that most of the people that are in leadership We've got to be very wise and we've got to be very sensitive because we have a lot of satanic spirits that are coming in. A lot of them are witches undercover who are titled all up. And we've got wounded vagabond sheep, we really, really do, who are walking around in disguise. They're very, very hurt. Uh, They're all titled up and they're just ready to work. But we've got to be careful because in order for us to be able to recognize these spirits and to avoid uh, us getting off track for this growth that Daddy's trying to take us to, you know, we've got to make sure that we look at the season and the time that he's showing you for this growth, and we've got to get people who God has appointed to be involved in the work strategically. And so let's jump into the lesson. I want to kind of bring out a couple points as far as making sure you qualify those relationships and looking at how these are going to represent what God has called you to do in regards to making sure that they have the, you know, the leader's heart. It's very, very important. We you need to make sure that we get them to understand how to embrace it. Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs 29 and 18 that where there's no vision, the people are going to perish. And so we've got to make sure that the vision is there and that the vision is being followed and, and in humility, and most importantly, that they honor the set man or woman and that they, you know, present themselves humbly as a son or daughter. You may be a minister of the gospel, or you may be your own business owner, but when you have a partner or you are under another ministry, then you are a leader following the leader. Can't lead and follow at the same time. You're going to make sure that you of following the leader. Now, there are certain kind of spirits now that are releasing this last day, and they're there to pull churches down in these times of, you know, seasons and times of growth. You know, right when the morale is all high and everything, and everybody's in pursuit to try to make something work, here come these spirits undercover, and they're there. So I'm going to give you five different types of people that we got to look at while you're growing this uh, apostolic, prophetic, and evangelical move that Daddy God is really putting in your heart. Well, the first one, we've got to be aware of, no, oh, we do this. I keep forgetting my set my timer. Uh, the first one we've got to be aware of is the one that feeds on offense, okay? Um, and what they like to do, they like to try to cause a, a split in the church with all this grumbling and complaining and all that because they don't like the way Daddy God is actually sending the person because they can see that the church is going to grow or the ministry is going to go to another dimension. So they're going to come in and complain and, and kind of sow seeds that way to try to prevent it. And what we've got to do is we've got to make sure that you look at this because it's all purpose-driven so that they can divert you off or take you off course by trying to deal with that mess, trying to deal with that contending spirit against what that is called you to do. And then the second one I really want you to make sure you pay attention to, and that's the one who really wants to flow in this offense, but they want the person to feed off of it. But I want you to, you know, to just think about who could that person be, especially when you are trying to give all the strengths and all the wisdom that daddy is trying to show you to the people that he has put to your hand. And then you got this person's coming in trying to look like they're okay to help, but actually they're not. And that's when we're looking at those who are feeding the excesses, you know, the excesses of the flaws or the excesses of the flaws that maybe uh, you're trying to get up into another dimension, you know, especially when you're trying to grow it or fix what needs to be new. We talked about the strategy of taking the vision to another dimension through new ways of looking at the strengths and the weaknesses, right? Well, that second kind of spirit you've got to look at 
is this type of spirit who is very aware of where you are. They're aware of all these seasons and these times where you've been up and where you've been down. But they come in to look at the flaws that still, as far as they're concerned, ain't fixed, you know, or, and, they, and they're definitely not tithing, and they're definitely not even giving offering. But the problem is with this type of spirit, what it likes to do is like to feed on the struggles. It likes to feed on the weaknesses. And it also likes to look at any type of sin or anything that the, the leader is, uh, quote, is trying to uh, ignore as far as they're concerned and not deal with. So they want to make sure that it looks like it's a uh, lot, lot weaker than it is strong and, uh, and that this problem that is there is going to be too hard to overcome or when they're sowing this tear, they're really just trying to make sure that this person that is really for the church uh, and they may have something against the leader because maybe they're not letting them do something or they, you know, haven't asked them to do something. So these type they feed on the excess of what is a, a discontentment to them. And these people, they also want to also, at every point that they possibly can, go beyond what the pastor or the leader of the ministry is telling them to do. They always want to do this extra thing. They always want to do the extra curricula. They always want to add something in particular that they want to do without getting permission. They encourage this thing to, and, and the other people to get involved with these things that they know is not orderly. They, they know that it's not in the, you know, in the, um, in the rules or the regulations. Not, I'm not talking about anything that's going to be legalistic, but I'm talking about policy and procedures and those things they've been trained up to do according to the, the pastor or the leader's vision. And so we've got to make sure we look at that. A lot of these people, and we've got to think about it as believers, we need people around us who are willing to, you know, to, to, that's going to challenge us. But we've got to make sure that we be encouraged to make sure that we defeat these types of spirits by reprimanding them, by making sure that we're not afraid to sit down and talk to them so that these weaknesses that they have or these struggles that they have because they came in wounded or what have you or feel rejected, that they don't be infiltrating the church to uh, have this discontentment or this disunity. And so then the third one is the, the type that really, really uh, is really big because they love to try to say that they're going to defend the leader, but they actually are not. What they're there to do is they refuse to defend the leader or the spiritual father or mother in the spirit. Uh, what they're doing, they find a reason to make sure that whatever it is that that person is saying is true and good, they want to make sure that uh, they can prove that that leader is not that good, he's not that great, or she's not that uh, caring. This is because oftentimes when you're in a season or a time of change in a ministry or you transitioning from your business, a lot of people have a, an adjustment of their mindset because they don't want to make change. And I talked about that earlier on. They don't want to advance in something that's going to make them get out of their norm or I call it too comfortable. And so we need to make sure that many times these people become very irritated, become very frustrated, and they feel a sense of pressure that, you know, now i got to – do all this and everybody hurrying about elect lady or hurrying about what pastors getting ready to do the new building or what have you but the people suffer a lot of backlash and a lot of tax especially when the leader is doing their very best to try to do what God has called them to do and you know and trying to make sure he leads the people according to the vision that God has given him or her so the leader needs to be reassured that the people are going to build them up who are there to really uh, be a part of what God has called them to, and that they're going to build up one another. See, when people are truly connected to whatever God has told that leader or that person to do, they know they've been called, they know they've been planted to be there, they protect the house, they protect the leader, and they don't care what nobody else say, they know that they are, they're going to be that type of person. Sometimes we have those who just refuse to uh, hear God when it comes to doing what is right, and they just want to always cause some kind of problem. But we got to be very, very careful about connecting with people who do not want to obey and be led by Holy Spirit to capture the true heart of the leader and embrace that thing, because if they do not, they cannot have the vision. They will not even catch the mantle. It's really, really sad that people want to waste time like that. And then the fourth spirit that we got to watch when you're in seasons and times of growth, and you know, especially when you're in transition, this fourth spirit likes to avoid or maintain uh, stability. They don't want to, they try to trivialize. Uh, that type of vision that God may be showing you that is new, 
you know, uh, whatever purpose that you may be doing that's a new strategy. And so this trivial type of behavior, this means that they take for granted. That means they make fun of it, like, yeah, right, okay, right, we do need a fence and a new driveway, yeah, right, okay. See, so these times of season and growth, we're going to have these people who are always going to be used by the devil. They're going to make fun of the vision. They're going to say, oh, well, I don't know why she did that last time. That didn't work. You know, oh, yeah, right, they're going to they gonna build this up here for what? We ain't got that much money already in the bank. I, the last church meeting we had, the last meeting we had in our uh, for our group, for our nonprofit, uh, what I understand is now she's talking about we're going to do this, or he's saying we're going to do that. So they always want to try to find something that could, you know, try to halt or resist the advancement or the growth of what the uh, Holy Spirit is leading the leader to do. They like to belittle the agendas, you know, the purposes. So you got to be very, very careful about when you're getting ready to go through this transition or this time, this new season that God is showing you for growth. Because you remember, he wants everything to grow. But many times we can't grow because we're allowing people to be in our ear and be amongst those people who God has put to our hand to be very aggressive to pull that down, the vision, to pull it down, the, you know, the, the, especially the energy of excitement you know, that people are having about what God is doing. And then I think I gave you the fourth one, the number five. Number five is really, really something else, too, because this is one of the ones that's very, very uh, prevalent with people who are vagabond spirits, you know. They have this uncertainty. You know, they be there a while, and they like, you know, I'm just here, you know. I'm just visiting. You know, I don't call no church my home. And so what they do is they don't want to even get connected to any organization or anything to say that they're a part of anything because they've been so wounded. And so this fifth type of person they got to see if they're going to trust you because they've been wounded so bad. they become so hard-hearted with everything and everybody. So they try to avoid order. They try to avoid any type of government and structure. Uh, they just want to come in when they want. They want to do what they want. But during your growth period, you've got to make sure you watch these people who feed on uncertainties of connections, okay? We're going to talk about that. That means being placed. That means being part of something. And so why? Because placement is a sphere, and what it does is give you a divine assignment to what God is really taking the person or the individual that's being connected to the vine that daddy is getting them connected to. Now, I got to get off of here because I can't stay on here, but I did want to say that we are not called to every church or every member uh, to go to any type of nonprofit or whatever, but we are called to be a body. And so and since we're all called to be a body, we need to make sure that we are being a part of what God is leading you to and that those that are coming to you saying that God brought them there or chose you know, them to be a part of this, we need to make sure that they know that they can come to you and talk to you. But we cannot be in a place where we are available for everybody. Everybody wants to just talk to the pastor. Everybody in the world just want to make sure that they can talk directly to the pastor or directly to the leader. But the enemy don't want to have unity. It doesn't want you to uh, show where and what this person is really in front of everybody. But sometimes people have to be publicly exposed, especially when they're trying to plant seeds of, you know, of grumbling and complaining and division. And so I want you to know that we've got to deal with these spirits of disgruntledness and grumbling and complaining. We've got to look at these people who are feeding others who have hope and are looking for things to grow and excited about things about to grow. But this is very dangerous, especially during this season of growth and, and building and, re, you know, repositioning what God is trying to show you where your spirits are pregnant at. He wants it to grow. He wants you to grow up, and he wants you to make sure that in these seasons of growth, you want to stabilize. You want to make sure that these, not only just stabilize, you want to protect those people that God has put to your hand to make sure that this new harvest don't get spoiled, don't get tricked by what they're hearing, you know, from these other people. So these uncertainties simply means they doubt that they're supposed to be there. And it's coupled, uh-oh, there go my alarm, and, and this doubt is also coupled with a whole lot of, uh, I'm not sure if even you fit what I need. So if you don't learn to recognize these people real, real quick, and you don't deal with them real, real quick, this thing is going to amplify. It's going to start a great fire of division within that organization, that ministry, and it's going to make people disconnect 
from the place that maybe that they will begin to start feeling suspicious about the leadership or even the place where they've been planted. Well, I pray that that don't happen to you. I pray that you will teach them how to embrace the leader's heart and that they will realize that they can represent and they can make sure they pull that thing down from those that come in to try to divide and conquer. I'll talk to you tomorrow. So excited we're on day six. God bless you.